And uh, good evening and welcome to this meeting of the State and City Council. It is Tuesday, the 22nd of August, 2017. Would all those of a like mind please join me for a flag? Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let's see. Everyone is here that needs to be tonight except Councillor. Councillor. Neagle. Yeah, Neagle, thank you. Duh. And so we will go ahead on it. Um, we don't have any new people to introduce. Uh, are there any additions to the agenda? Or declarations of ex-party contact, conflict of interest, bias, etc. Hearing none, we'll go on to comments and pre presentations from the public. Um, Ms. Brazelton, Debbie Brazelton, would you get up and tell us who you are and where you live and your topic? Sure. My name is Debbie Brazelton. I'm the assistant principal at Staten High School. Um, I'm going into my fourth year here with the school district. Um, I live actually in Silverton, but I uh, am here uh, as a representative of the 4th of July Committee, State and 4th of July Committee. Uh, we were fortunate enough to receive one of the community grants this last year for $1,000. Hopefully you received our thank you letter for that, and I wanted to come and thank you in person. I remembered um, hearing uh, last year that you often don't get feedback as far as how the dollars were spent, um, how the event that the money was used for went, um, and all of those things. So I wanted to make sure that we did that um, this year for you. Um, so this will be, uh, this was the end of my second year as part of the committee. The committee is made up of only about nine people uh, that are interested in keeping the 4th of July going. Uh, so it's, uh, if you divide all of the work amongst the nine of us, it's quite a, quite a significant amount of work. Um, we were successful this year in raising funds, um, more so than, uh, more funds than any of the years past that I have record for. Um, we raised about $11,275 um, from sponsorships uh, from businesses throughout the community. And um, that's about 2,700 more than the year before, which was the most that had been raised in um, the last few years since we've been keeping track. Uh, so we're pleased with that. The event, um, as it stands, costs about $10,000 um, to put on. The majority of that is the fireworks. Um, I think they're about 7,500, if I remember correctly. But I don't know if any of you had the um, ability to be here in Staten on the 4th. The 4th of July um, fireworks that are put on here are the best that I have seen in any community. I think they're um, very well done. Mike Miller has agreed um, to be our uh, committee chair moving forward into this next year. Uh, for those of you that don't know Mike, he is the head of maintenance for North Sandingham School District and um, has been the one in charge of setting off the fireworks. I think he said this was his 24th year or he's going into his 24th year um, of doing that here in Staten. So uh, he's got a lot of experience and it shows. I think our fireworks show is phenomenal. Um, for those of you that don't know all of the details of the parade, one of the things that takes a significant amount of time and organization other than the fundraising, which is uh, the lion's share of the work really, is um, setting up for the day itself, in particular the parade. So we had a small um, group of people, um, a couple of people who sort of took on the responsibility of putting on the parade. We had 50 entries this year, which was the most um, that we have logged in recent years. And um, so in that sense, it was, it was really um, 
successful and well done. Uh, recent Staten High School graduate Ryan Ferret was our MC for the parade. Uh, and then festivities moved over to the high school football practice field where um, we had free events for kids. We've been very purposeful about not charging families for their kids to do events. We had um, cornhole boards that were built. Um, and bounce houses, uh, some sort of old-fashioned games, ring toss that was pretty challenging. Um, I found out after we got started. And uh, gunny sack races, those kinds of things. So I think that they were really enjoyed. And we had um, music um, put on by a DJ um, who donated his time as well. So uh, by the time fireworks rolled around and the evening was really um, underway, the field, the practice field was pretty full. And so it was a good turnout. So I wanted to say thank you. Um, we have applied for the grant again this year. And um, we'll, we'll hope to um, have at least the same and hope to continue to make it a bigger event as we move forward. So thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, I don't, anyone? I'd like there to thank go. you for coming and, oh. and giving yeah. us an update. That's I know great. how this goes, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you on the much. other end of things, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you Debbie. Very much. Okay, all right. Uh, ben Schoenborn. Good morning, or good evening. Good evening. I'm Van Schoenborn. I live at uh, 813 Southwest 8th Street in Sublimity, and I'm here to represent the uh, State High School Booster Club. And uh, went uh, had some parents that were interested in uh, maybe painting a eagle head on the middle of the street, and so uh, I went to Lance, our uh, state, our public works, and uh, so he he's went to the mayor, and then the mayor came back, or not the mayor, the uh, uh, city manager. I've been city working manager. with the city administrator. That's correct, and so. They had some questions, and so, uh, like, they wanted to see the picture of what it would look like. They wanted to know the dimensions. They wanted to know uh, who would maintain it. They wanted to know if the school district was uh, uh, going to be a support of it. And am I missing anything, Lance? No, they're off the top of my head. That seems about right. So anyway, so uh, this last week I've compiled all that information and have sent most of it to Lance and then uh, uh, or the principal, Mr. Kirby, has sent a letter to the city manager and uh, in his support of the uh, booster club painting this eagle head on the street. And uh, it's going to look uh, pretty much like what we have on our school building. It's going to be, we're looking at it probably about 10 or 12 foot in diameter. We were going to use uh, ODOT approved paint so that it would hold up. And the booster club has agreed to maintain it so it doesn't go fading. And, uh, so anyway, um, they said that one of the steps that was going to have to happen is that it would have to come before the city council for approval of that to happen. And so because it didn't happen last Wednesday, all this stuff coming in, because I knew like Monday or Tuesday that that had to be done, um, that I was going to present at this time so that uh, we could get it going before school started, hopefully. We? I'd like to add that to that, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of the reasons um, I had told Van that I thought it was important to go before the city council is because if you recall, for the last several years that we've had races in this community, any kind of paint on the ground, there's some concern, and uh, I thought it was important to bring this and let the council decide whether or not they would like this on their streets. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to speak there, Keith, but uh, 
that was one of the reasons we got, I got you involved as well. well. Yeah, I mean, I think we're a little ahead of ourselves. I sent, I sent you a message today to, to kind of talk and, and try to work out maybe some of the details before we came to the council and, and answering some of the questions. Um, I had conversations with Lance today as, as well. Um, I agree at some point if we, if we can work everything out, it would need to come in front of the council. But I do think we should we should meet and talk and discuss some of the, the bigger issues. It's just not as simple as painting something on the street. Ben, anything else? And, and would you take some questions, please? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm I'm going I'm assuming, but I'll just verify that clarify that you're talking about the street in front of the high school. Is that yes, we were going to paint one there on Locust Street to the entrance of the school, and also one on Gardner. Okay. And this is you know you see that in different towns, like in college towns where they yeah. mm -hmm. they put the mascot in the middle of the street in the right. college on uh, street in front of the college and stuff so right. that's where the idea came from right yeah, so i think it you know the school spirit and boosterism is a wonderful thing my mom is a retired educator mark cronquist council here i live in the council um but can you put it on like the school driveways or something wouldn't that be at lake oswego high school we had a giant Pilot Joe on the on the driveway, which is a private drive leading to the school, just like you have a statement. Because otherwise, Regis is going to want the Rams, and the, the middle schools are going to want their logos on it, and then the elementary schools are going to want their logos on it. And pretty soon, you'll have logos all over town. That would that be one of that, the kids that that was going to be a backup, but the original idea was I, in I the middle of street. I think we, it's great, it, and put it on your driveways, big and bold. Yeah. I. <clears throat> It's not that easy to get a lot of volunteers together to, to offer to maintain it and to paint it and that kind of stuff. So I, I don't see a big run on uh, stuff. But, but I did want to know, other than the concerns that, that you had brought forward, were there other concerns, Keith, besides that? Yeah, I, I do think there are other concerns um, on top of that um, as well. So I think we should. There's something we should talk about and, and work through and see if we can work it out. And I, I did suggest in my message that you know maybe moving it to the parking lot of the school would be be better. And, and the concern would be you know going to, to Mark's point, it could expand even beyond that. So you know where, okay. where do we draw the line and how to draw the line and, and upkeep mm -hmm. and, and care and, and other such things. Okay, I think I, that I. Um, just saw one. Is it, is it Independence or Monmouth that I thought I saw one when I... Well, there's one at Western. Yeah, maybe that's... I was just in Monmouth today and went thought, and I thought it looked really neat that it was uh, really kind of showed the community's backing of, uh, of the school and its team and actually just noticed it. It's surprising you're here tonight because I literally just noticed it today. Yeah. That looked great. Ben, have people that have done these or, or uh, uh, allowed them, sponsored them, whatever, uh, do they kind of minimize the distraction element of it? Especially if that eagle was going to go up by the bank on first and locust, or were you going to put, put these things down closer to the school grounds? No, this would be in the entrance into the parking lot on locust, and the other one would be on the entrance on the street going into off of Gardner. Oh, okay. So it'd be right there, okay. right there by the school property. Yeah, that takes that takes care of my concern. Anyone else? No. Okay. Um, so we'll wait to hear what Keith comes up with. You're gonna. I, the impression I get is Keith is that you want to work on this before I, we I talk like, about yeah, it I'd anymore. Like to meet and talk and okay. Discuss some of those those concerns. Okay. Okay, so thank you for your time. We're, we're good for now. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Anyone else on comments from the public? Then let's go to the consent agenda. It's August 7th, 2017 City Council Minutes. Folks had a chance to review those. We have. I move we approve them as written. Okay, I've got a motion to approve as... Uh, as presented, is there a second? I'll second it. All right, and a second to approve as, as uh, submitted. So uh, all in favor say aye, please. Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. 
Hearing none, we'll declare the motion passed. And we'll go to a, I believe we have a public hearing. We do. A proposed code amendment regarding accessory dwelling units in residential zoning districts. Commencement of the public hearing. Script to be read at commencement of public hearing. All right. Good evening, my name is Hank Porter. Mayor of Staten, I will be presiding over this hearing. This is a time and place set for the public hearing in the matter of land use file number 5-06-17 concerning legislative amendments to the land use development code for allowing the construction or placement <coughs> of accessory dwelling units in the low density residential and medium density residential zones. Uh, no, TH, that's a note for later. The hearing is now open. At the back counter is the agenda for this evening's meeting, which lays out the order in which people will be called on to speak during the public hearing, a copy of the proposed amendments, the City Council's rules of procedure for land use, public hearings, and a brochure written to facilitate your participation in the public hearing. You're encouraged to obtain and read a copy of these documents as well. At this time, I'd ask the audience if there are any objections to the notice for this hearing. I hear none to the jurisdiction of this body to hear and consider this matter. I hear none. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest, ex parte contact, or bias by any members of this body? And I hear none. We are now ready for the staff report. Mr. Fleischman. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, as described in the uh, Mayor's opening statement, the issue before you tonight is a public hearing on legislative amendments to the Land Use and Development Code. These amendments, if enacted, would permit the creation, placement, construction of one accessory dwelling unit on a lot that already has a single family detached dwelling on it in the low density and medium density residential zones, which are the two zones that allow detached single family homes. This is an issue that uh, was initiated by the planning commission back in the spring. One of the planning commissioners at the end of a meeting said, hey, what, what, a, what is the city's policy about tiny houses? Uh, I, I explained that currently we do not allow tiny houses or any other type of accessory dwelling unit. Our code says in the single family district you get one single family detached house per lot. Uh, and I suggested that if the Planning Commission wanted to look at the issue of tiny homes or tiny houses that they look at the broader issue of accessory dwelling units. Uh, I provided them with a number of uh, papers and research documents on various issues. They uh, essentially came up with what they'd like to do is allow accessory dwelling units with, at single family homes. The way the code is written, uh, you could take your existing house and divide it into two by creating a accessory dwelling unit in the house. You could add an, a, construct an addition to the house or you could build or move in a separate detached structure as an accessory structure uh, that someone could live in. And uh, the Planning Commission has proposed uh, a number of standards uh, that would apply to an accessory dwelling unit. The proposed amendments uh, restrict their size to at, they must be at least 250 square feet, but may not be any larger than 800 square feet. It requires that the principal dwelling unit remain a minimum of 1,000 square feet, which is what our code requires a new home to be. And it requires that at least one of the dwelling units on the property be owner occupied. Uh, and finally, uh, it requires an additional parking space be provided. 
Uh, for the dwelling, for the accessory dwelling unit, our code requires that single-family homes have a minimum of two parking spaces. So this would require one for the accessory dwelling unit. Um, so Dan, that's a total of three. Two so that would be a total, of, right? A minimum of three parking space, off-street parking spaces. If someone has a two-car garage and garage space in front, I mean, and driveway space in front of the garage, then they already have four. Um, finally, uh, you've got in your packet a copy of Senate Bill 1051 um, that was enacted by the legislature. The last time I checked the legislature's website, it had not yet been signed by Governor Brown, but I've been told that she has now signed it, but I haven't verified that. I have not heard anything in the news that she's issued a notification that she's going to veto it. So, but anyway, um, the, this new law uh, requires that any city with a population greater than 2,500 must allow at least one accessory dwelling unit for each detached single family dwelling in, um, in zones where detached single family dwellings are permitted uh, subject to quote reasonable local regulations regarding siting and design. Uh, while the bill itself was written and enacted as emergency legislation, therefore becomes effective when signed by the governor, this section does not become effective, become operative, whatever the difference between operative and effective is, until next July. But should you um, choose tonight to not enact these regulations or any regulations, we will be back sometime before next July in order for the city to be in compliance with the new, the new requirements that the legislature has enacted. So, uh, oh, the other thing you've got in your packet is a letter that the city received from the Department of Land Conservation and Development uh, encouraging the city to adopt these regulations uh, and uh, suggesting several changes to the proposed amendments. Uh, uh, the Planning Commission, after reviewing the suggestions from the DLCD, chose not to make any changes in the proposal. Um, the, the DLCD expressed concern about the parking requirements suggesting that there, we should not require any additional parking uh, and also express concern about the requirement for owner occupancy. The Planning Commission uh, was concerned quite frankly with the um, condition of much of the rental housing and the lack of maintenance and apparent control of tenant activity in much of the rental housing in this community that uh, not including that requirement would would lead to undesired impacts in neighborhoods where that if it was owner occupied those impacts would 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 more likely to be minimized and, and hence the requirement for owner occupancy of at least one of the units okay. so with that I'll answer any questions you have before we open it up to testimony from the public Okay, questions from council. Go ahead, Brian. Dan, can you reiterate what the current code allows right now? He said... The cur currently, currently, in the low density and medium density zone, you're allowed to... Uh, there are other uses permitted, but if right. you have a single family home, you just get, you just get one. Mm -hmm. And the code is clear no matter how big your lot is, mm -hmm. there's only one sing detached single family home right. permitted. In the medium density zone, a duplex mm -hmm. is a permitted use. You do not need any additional land. So in the medium density zone, someone today could put an addition on their home to be a second dwelling unit. Uh, the code would allow that. Okay. And the state uh, legislation is addressing specifically those zones or not? Uh, the, the new legislation says that a city 
uh, with a population of 2,500 or more shall allow in areas zoned for detached single family dwellings. Which would be low density. Which is the low density and medium density zones. Okay. Thank you. So while the Planning Commission started this process before the legislature enacted this law, it appears the legislature has now told us that we have to do what we've set out to choose to, or at least what the Planning Commission was choosing to, to recommend to you that we do. Dan, is, uh, am I? It's been signed. I can, okay. I can confirm it oh. has been signed by the governor. Go ahead, jump in there. No, I just want to say I, I, I went online and confirmed it has been signed okay. by the governor. Okay, it has been signed. Let me get a comment in here well, before I forget it. Um, the provisions in that state law addressing mobile, uh, manufactured housing, that's probably going to be the lightning rod, isn't it? Uh, this bill does not address... Well, actually, there are other sections of this bill that do address manufactured housing. Uh, I don't think they do anything that we don't already do here in state. I don't, other, other than accessory dwellings, I don't think that this Senate bill will require us to change our code or change our practices in how we regulate residential development. Hmm. I just wonder how the community is going to react, would react to uh, uh, not a rash, but starting to see single wide mobile homes uh, on these on these lots. I don't know. I, it's just a thought. Yeah, we, we do not allow a single wide. So if the if this new bill does require us to do so, which I don't remember reading, uh, then that would be a change we need to make in the code. Okay. Unnecessary fear on my part, probably. Per it's not okay. unnecessary fear. How do they? How do they? No. Do, does it say that you have to have like a foundation? How how do they keep uh, the, from, how do they keep mobile homes from and trailers from being part of this? Uh, well, mobile by by the definition of what a manufactured housing unit is. So a tra it needs to have either a um, uh, an insignia saying that it was built to the federal standards, which a travel trailer cannot and does not, uh, or is in, meets the state's standards for manufactured housing. And again, a trailer, thinking of a travel trailer, uh, does does not meet those standards. But a single, yeah, Mr. Fleischman, a single wide a dwelling single wide. unit, like by. Global or a, Golden a, Homes a or something. A single wide manufactured housing unit would have one of those two mm -hmm. insignia on it. Uh, currently, I guess I, I must have missed that in the bill. There's nothing that I could read that prohibited that because it. But, but our code. Um, our code requires, outside of a mobile home park, our code requires that a manufactured housing unit essentially be a double wide. The, the other question, well, they could bring in a double wide if they had enough space. The other question was on Angela Carnahan's letter. Yep. On point one of the Carnahan letter was about um, pre existing homes that do not convert, uh, can, can, that are non compliant. Basically, I think she went into a paragraph on that. Can they then also put in a, if you have a non compliant yeah, home? Yeah, I, I do not believe that our code uh, uh, and the amendments that are before you would prohibit a non-conforming structure so if you're if you don't meet your the current front yard setback because your house is too close to the street there's nothing in our code that would prohibit you from having an, an accessory dwelling unit would that have a negative impact or would that be something we i don't think that it would have a negative now, impact. i don't know how many non-conforming homes there are in this town uh probably I imagine there are in quite the a older lot. parts of town probably quite a few yeah yeah Here for this old, the old parts of town <laughs> come right. to their defense. Okay. Okay. Any no. other <laughs> questions from the council at this point? Okay, uh, proponents' testimony. Those in favor of of this? I think, how about opponents? Okay. Any general testimony? And questions from the public? Anything? 
this mass of humanity that we're having to deal with tonight. Okay. And all those people who got state was cool yesterday. Yeah, uh, they all gone. Yeah, they all went home. Questions from the council. More of that. Uh, are there any other uh, insights we can share? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Not much of a question. Just a statement. I think okay. if we will be forced to deal with this in July. I don't see the need to press it tonight. I think the community should be more aware of this than just passing it tonight. Just my thought. I certainly share that uh, that emotion. Okay, that thought. Uh, Dan, a staff summary, please. Uh, I don't have much more to add, um, other than to say, uh, not you know, notices have gone out of this public hearing of the Planning Commission's public hearing. We had the exact same level of participation at the Planning Commission public hearing. I, I will say I did get one phone call uh, prior to the Planning Commission's public hearing from someone who was expressing concern uh, when I urged her to come to the hearing or to send a letter. She said, well, I guess that's the way it's going to be, and that was the end of the she, and hung up on me. So. But she's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I guess she told you, huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Priscilla. Is there, I mean, the way that I'm seeing it with the state uh, requiring us to do this, it's, it's not something up for debate. So I, it seems like to put it out, to put it, it, into the public any more than we already have with the public notice seems like just putting off something that we're going to have to yeah. do anyway because that, that's not a debatable issue. Yeah. We're going to have to to do this by law, so I, we might as well just do it. I, I agree, but I also agree with Councilor Quigley that if we get, you know, we're going to have to do this, we have no choice in the matter. But we have until next July to have Dan look at the finer points of the law and provide us with input on the ramifications of it, and also the time that gives us ten and a half months for the community to be aware that we're going to have to do this so it doesn't look like we're putting the cart before the horse or whatever. My thought is it's just time to educate the community and time to further refine, any, as our mayor said. Any more than we're accused of doing that anyway. Uh, but we can, Dan, would you agree that it's possible we can tailor this to our community? I thought we did. I, I, yeah, I right, believe yeah. that the Planning Commission has done that yeah, and that right, the amendment right. before yeah, you, yeah. Again, the amendment before you reflects the concerns of the Planning Commission. One of the things that concerns me is the use of our time. It's like when we visit this 10 months from now, because we now have to go back through everything and Dan needs to remind us of everything that he said, and again, it's not something that is debatable. The Planning Commission has already taken their time to develop it for our community, and, uh, and so it's just, a, a, a time consuming to come back to it when there's when again there's been two public hearings two options for people to come um, so I don't see any reason to yeah. make it continue on I'm only sensitive because of a dog park and the thought that there wasn't enough time to comment on it <laughs> that, again the people who thought that didn't look at the process because it was it was a long process and it was a process that was followed the law was followed and uh, the I think the the idea of the law was followed also but okay there anything else you're going to call the question okay let's uh, let's close the hearing and we'll go to council deliberation we've got some choices presented to us this evening and they are approve the first consideration of ordinance 1010 and that is in front of us or approve the ordinance with modifications return the ordinance to staff for further refinement or retain the code unchanged what, do you, what would you folks like to do I would move to approve the ordinance number 1010 as presented okay that second it got a motion and a second to approve the first consideration of ordinance 1010 as presented. Um, is there any other discussion? Okay. Um, yeah. Councilor Glidewell? Would you, would you, yeah, would you poll yes. the council, please? Yes. <laughs> Councilor Glidewell? Yes. Councilor Russellman? Yes. Councilor Cronquist? Yes. Councilor Quigley? No. Motion passes three to one. 
If the vote is not unanimous, Ordinance 1010 will be brought before the council for a second consideration at the September 18th, 2017 meeting. Okay. So. Can I make a comment, Mayor? What's that? Yes, Can please. Can I make it, or actually maybe a question? I'm wondering if somebody has an idea of how we could go about in some different way letting people know more. Brian, you specifically, how, how would you suggest, because I, I agree that it would be nice if more people had input, but I don't know how to go about it any more than putting public announcements out there. I was just wondering if there was some other way, because just time isn't doing sure. anything. I can so tell there you the has to be a, a, the, some the way. The first time I know about this was when it was on the agenda. Okay, but what I'm saying is what, if you want the community to know about sure. it, what is that's, the that's, process? I would say we posted, the, is, the, is the agenda for the council meeting posted on the community site? Yes, it is, yeah. as is the agenda for the planning commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the, what it needs to be done has been done, and, and I agree, it doesn't seem to get the word out there. It's also on state and events, and yeah. in our town, and in the yeah. shopper, and in the... Yeah, I just don't know what more, or if there's something more that we could do, I'd love to be in the process of to help and do it. I guess just, uh, you know, I don't. if it's an issue that's specific, like this one to me, I'm gonna use my word of mouth to tell as many people as I, as I can, I guess. And that's why we have it set up like this. When there's not unanimous, it goes to the next thing. So give some people some time. To and just consider it. Yeah. Okay. Spread the word. Great. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, anything else on that? Well, let's go. Um, let's go to unfinished business then. We can only keep Joe here for another half, oh, 25 minutes. So let's get a bunch of this done. New business ordinance number 1011, amending state municipal code. 5.20 relating to solicitors. Chief Stevens, yes. please. Mayor and Council, I bring to you tonight uh, ordinance uh, number uh, 1011, which is an ordinance to amend uh, the code uh, 5.20 relating to solicitors. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, issues with uh, solicitors uh, in the community going door to door uh, and uh, uh, and causing problems for uh, some of the residents in town. Uh, by putting these uh, uh, changes uh, into the code uh, it uh, it strengthens up our uh, our soliciting uh, uh, code uh, to help the officers out in enforcing these and uh, particularly helping the, the residents uh, when they do not want solicitors coming at their door at, uh, at all hours of the night uh, and not leaving when they uh, want them to leave uh, so that what this does is it uh, it sets time parameters on when the solicitors can go door to door uh, it uh, tells them that uh, if they refuse to, uh, uh, to leave when the, the homeowner asks them to leave, that they can uh, be either arrested uh, for trespassing or they can uh, have their uh, permit revoked. Um, it uh, does not allow, it keeps them from going into the home uh, and things like that, so. Okay, Mr. Hanna. Go ahead. Mark. Is there a um, religious exemption to that? Because I've been told by certain denominations yes. yeah. that yes. they, they don't have to apply. They, they show up at my door. That is correct. Yeah. Nonprofits so and charitable um, organizations. Correct. Yeah. Not, not nonprofits uh, and uh, religious yeah. organizations, yeah. organizations yeah. are exempt from this. Yeah. So does this include door hangers, Rich, where you're not knocking on the door, you're not selling anything, you're just passing out advertisement? In, in the past, it has. Dan, do you want to comment on that? The way the definition of soliciting reads, if you are distributing literature for the purpose of trying to sell a good or service, and it's considered then, soliciting. then you need a license. Okay. So one of the local pizza joints pretty much annually gets a license for a number of their employees because they're out putting pizza flyers in people's doors. One of the local pizza joints. It, I just, I, One of the local pizza joints regularly gets a license. I don't know whether the other pizza joints are also out yeah. leaving literature. Sometimes there's confusion uh, between the solicitor and the itinerant merchant. Uh, the itinerant merchant is the, the salesperson that has the 
the, the food cart uh, or the selling whatever it happens to be and they're going to a street corner or a parking lot uh, and or they're driving through the neighborhood uh, with their uh, uh, their food cart uh, selling the items that way that is different because the the person is the, the citizen is going to the vendor themselves versus the vendor going to the person's doorway mm -hmm. like Schwann's or whatever yeah. correct Schwann's is different because they you you pay for that prior to uh, they just deliver they're, they're exempt right. because that's, they're just delivering the food that's more different than the yeah. UPS yeah. truck I found it very unfriendly as a business owner in this town uh, probably just because it was one other thing I had to deal with I do door hangers in Salem I actually have people on my staff that do nothing but door hang but when I actually had business out here and I had to get a, a light a, a, a permit to do it you had to tell who the person was so the person had to go down and get their things well I didn't always know who the person was going to be that day so either I had to pay for all of them to go down and get done and then also it could be you have to tell exactly which day it is so if it's minus 10 below and raining and you don't want your person out there, you just wasted your money by paying for it. And so like I found it way too strict for, you know, if, that, if I could have just been a little more free, like, a, you know, like I could door hang any time that week or something, would have been much easier than to try and pinpoint days, particularly in the winter. Anyway, I found it to be un, uh, unfriendly to my business. Isn't it great though that all this, all this advertising, what an adventure advertising, paid advertising is. It is. And, you know, anyway. Oh, moving right along. What would the, what would you folks like to do with this? Council deliberation and then some mm -hmm. action on it. I have one other question. What, um, why, this looks to me just like what it was before. Is there actually changes in it? Yes. There's uh, quite a few additions to it. And the additions being maybe the enforcement part of it, or no. do, you, do you have a color copy of it? Oh, okay, never mind. Needs to turn the page. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The the blue underlined is the it, is the additionals. Chief, is this right. has this been a problem? Is it a, a kind of a hmm. low grade irritant, or, or it's an irritant. I mean a constant kind of thing? Uh, every year, uh, usually at the beginning of the summer, end of the spring, is when we usually have the majority of the problems. Uh, and uh, many times, uh, or most of the vendors are from out of town. Uh, a lot of times they're uh, selling, uh, well, it, it ranges from uh, the vacuum cleaners to the, uh, the people selling magazines uh, for the, the, the business that's not even in the, in the community and they're just going door to door. Uh, many of them will not uh, leave when you ask them to leave. Uh, we've had problems with theft, um, where the people have come back uh, and stolen from the, the people later. Uh, we've had issues where they've come in at all hours of the night, uh, coming at 9 o'clock at night. When you're trying to put your kids to bed, they knock on the door, things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's no law that says that we could arrest someone for trespassing? If they're at your house and they don't leave, that without this law? You can, but this makes it a little bit simpler. Okay. So this will make your job a lot easier. Yes. Excellent. Thanks. Sadly, the with, with the trespassing law, the way you have to, usually the way the courts want to see it is they want you to, uh, the person to tell the person to leave, then the officer has to go and tell them to leave, and then if they come back again the next time, then that's when you can arrest them for it. Whereas this allows us just to give them the citation. Good. Okay. What would you folks like to do with this? Chief assures us it's going to make a safer, happier community and make his job easier. I see no, no drawbacks to that. I'm going to move we approve it. Okay. A, a motion to approve uh, ordinance number 1011. Is there a second, please? I second it. Joe, thank you. A motion and a second to approve uh, State and Municipal Code 5.20, Ordinance Number 1011. Uh, is there any discussion? Any more discussion? If not, let's go to a decision. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Oh, okay. No. No, was, that, was that a no or the, un the no. unhappy, the unhappy uh, <laughs> door hanger lady? The business person. Business person. There we go. 
Ordinance number 1012, amending state and municipal code number 9.36.020 relating to miscellaneous violations. Chief? Mayor and Council, I bring to you the second ordinance for tonight, which is uh, ordinance uh, 1012, and it's relating to uh, the miscellaneous violations. Uh, we currently have a section in the code that allows the, the officers to, uh, uh, to cite people for uh, a list of uh, crimes that are uh, listed in the Revi Oregon Revised Statutes as crimes, but allows us to, to handle them as violations through our municipal court. Currently, we do not handle crimes through our municipal court, and the list that uh, that you see here uh, on on the actually in the actual code, which is A through currently A through I, are items that the district attorney has generally not addressed in the in the criminal court either. Uh, these are items that have been uh, issues in the community, and it allows the officers to cite the cite the person directly into the municipal court, so that our own court and judge can handle these issues. What I'm adding tonight is the sale, possession, and use of fireworks, uh, currently, or which is also known as the illegal fireworks. Uh, currently, uh, that is a big misdemeanor, uh, and in the in the code, and and, uh, and so an officer would actually have to arrest somebody for uh, shooting off the illegal fireworks, and uh, and so generally the officers do not. Uh, deal with that, they usually take the, confiscate the fireworks and uh, tell the person not to do it again. Whereas this way, it's a little bit uh, uh, easier for the officers to deal with when they can just give them a citation. Okay. The, the second issue that we have added to it is a failure to return a suspended registration. When somebody is habitually uh, driving a, a car or having other people drive their car uh, that are currently suspended, uh, it allows the court to suspend the actual registration of the vehicle uh, so that the vehicle cannot be, cannot be registered that is owned by the, the suspended driver. And uh, currently that that is a, a, a C felony, or not a C felony, but a C misdemeanor. And this allows us to run that through the court as well. Hmm, that's interesting. Do that again, the last part on, yeah, he, please. You, can you actually, what then, seize a vehicle? Yeah. No, you're seizing the license plates. Oh, take the plates off. Correct. Oh, okay. D DMV, when, when the court uh, okay. sees that it's necessary to, to suspend a, a registration on a vehicle, they order the person to return their license plates back to DMV uh. and to not drive the vehicle until they get their court uh, uh, issues resolved, such as paying their fines and things like that. And this allows the, currently the way it is in the code is that uh, they actually get arrested if they keep those plates. Okay. Uh, and this allows us to handle it through our own court by giving them a citation instead. Okay. All right, good, thank you on that one. Other questions on this one, folks? Sure, go ahead, Brandon. Go, go, hmm? go ahead. Go ahead, Brandon. Chief, uh, real quick, does the fire uh, chief have any enforcement authority? The fire chief does not, but the fire marshal does which is through the, through the state police. Okay. Through uh, your I, department, is that we said? No, the, the, through, through the state, state police. State marshal, okay. Fire mar the state, state mar fire state marshal has authority to, uh, to enforce uh, the laws through the, through the state police. Gotcha. thanks. Uh, the fire marshal's office is underneath the state police. Okay. Uh, I've t I have talked to them about this and uh, they saw no issues with doing it this way and they said that because that it is a misdemeanor, very few people ever. <laughs> get cited for that. Generally the ones that get cited for it or arrest, actually arrested for that are those that are selling large truckloads of, of uh, illegal fireworks. Yeah, on the 4th of July it seems like a battle <laughs> zone, which is the 4th of July in American tradition. Yeah. You know, but you can also launch a U.S. Coast Guard approved signal rocket because U.S. Coast Guard, law, uh, US Coast Guard regulations encourage boaters to practice regularly away from navigable bodies of water. I know we spent $8,000, we load 37 millimeter shells. But I mean, defining illegal fireworks, what is an illegal firework? It's, in Oregon, it's something that goes more than, that leaves the ground more than a foot or something like that and or. Yes, uh, it's all very well, very well spelled out in, in the revised stat, Oregon revised statutes of, of what is, constitutes an illegal firework. Generally, they're pretty easy to uh, tell a difference. The, the, the 
per, the Roman candles, the people that are launching the, the, the large the mortars, mortars sure, yeah. up in yeah. the air. Those are the ones that we have problems with. So Rich, when you go to, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Rich, when you go to a place where illegal fireworks are going off, uh, do you cite everyone? How do you know, do you cite the person who has the house? How do you know who is responsible for the illegal fireworks? Or do you just cite whoever's available and then they have to prove that it's not theirs? It, it can be tricky. Usually it's the, the homeowner or the person that, uh, a lot of times they'll admit it. They'll, you'll walk up to them and they'll, Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll either catch them red-handed with it or they will uh, mm -hmm. they'll all be pointing at the other guy because they don't want to get caught mm -hmm. with the citations. I, I just don't it, I don't just don't think it's very clear about I, I don't know how someone could be clear about citing I don't like citations number one I think that once you have one it's very hard to prove yourself innocent of anything once you get in there everyone just assumes because you got the citation you're guilty and so if it's you know if you're not behind the will and you're speeding that's a very clear citation it's you but when you have 20 people out there and there's a firework going off and the homeowner didn't know the person had it, but the only person that's going to be available to cite is the homeowner, they're the one that's going to get it. I'm not so sure I like that. They're, they're usually not too, uh, uh, not too difficult to figure out who, who is doing it and which one's doing it, doing the, the wrong. So the officers do not cite unless they can figure it out, figure out who needs to be yeah. have the citation. They, have, they, ha they still have to have what's called probable cause to believe that the person is the one that did it. Okay. It's a fellow let's, missing let's the finger dance. So, so, so actually, Rich, what happens if somebody had, for instance, an agricultural bird bomb or a shotgun shell for discouraging um, birds eating wine grapes? So those are exempt. But there's no difference from that than the large bottle rocket. The, the law, the law uh, clearly <laughs> defines which ones are which, and it's... Uh, I mean, we make 37 millimeter bird bangers for the wine rake makers. You know? it, it's, it's, it's defined in the law and allowed to be used for agricultural purposes. Mm -hmm. And they're outside of city limits, so they're not our concern. Oh, okay. <laughs> it happens in Lynn County, it's Lynn's County. Yeah, we had to quit shooting them off uh, outside uh, one of the businesses on Main Street. A while ago. Anyway, uh, let's go to a vote on this, please. Or council, we got council deliberation. Ordinance 1012, amending state municipal code 9.30.020. We get a motion to do something. I'll we'll offer a motion to approve. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Sure. <laughs> a motion and a second to uh, approve ordinance 1012. Yeah. Any other questions or thoughts? I just don't want to cite the whole damn town on the 4th of July. <laughs> They're too busy directing traffic. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, that, that, I mean, Gus would certainly vote for this. He, he's yeah, terrified by those things. I have to stay up with him all night. Anyway, uh, could we get a vote on this? Uh, all in favor of Ordinance 1012, please. Aye. Say aye. 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 Okay, and opposed, same sign. Hearing no opposition, we'll declare it passed four to zero and go to proposed resolution, initiated annexation and comprehensive plan amendment. Mr. Fleischman. Thank you. Um, th this, the issue before you with this agenda item is the adoption of a resolution that addresses two pieces of property that the city has recently purchased uh, and initiates the annexation of one of them that's currently not within the city limits and initiates a comprehensive plan and zone map amendment for both of them. Um, and we are talking about um, the 13 acres of land that the city purchased from the Lambert family in December of 2016, uh, which has already been annexed but is currently designated by the comprehensive plan as residential and zoned medium density residential and the 26 acre property that the city purchased from the Putney family in January that is has not yet been annexed into the city and it is currently designated residential by our comprehensive plan map and because it's not in the city it is zoned Marion County urban transition. Um, adoption of this resolution would initiate the process for annexing the Putney property into the city. 
and to amend the comprehensive plan map for both of these properties from residential to public. And once the, um, once the process is finalized, to amend the comprehensive, the zoning map from medium density residential to public slash semi-public. Um, in, I've provided with to you in your packet a map showing these properties. Um, in, in addition to this, uh, just so that you know, while it's not part of the resolution because it's not city property, it's, it's not asking you to initiate it, there is the possibility that we will uh, add in the annexation uh, a strip of land to the west of the city-owned properties that's currently owned by Mr. Kindle. Uh, the staff has had some discussions with the owners of the um, large parcel of land to the north of Mr. Kindle's land about the possibility of them submitting an application for annexation and they would need to get a street right of way dedicated to get access to it. Uh, the city attorney has advised that prior to accepting a deed of dedication for the right of way, the city should annex the land. And so it may be, assuming we get the consent of Mr. Kindle and he's interested in pursuing it, we may, uh, when we return to the city council after going to planning commission, include that land in the annexation as well. And it would just be a, it's a 30 foot wide strip of land that is part of Mr. Kindle's uh, parcel. So if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. Okay, folks, what do you, uh, what would you like to do with this? I move that we approve the resolution as presented. Okay. We've got a motion to approve resolution 966 as presented. Yes. I second it. Okay, Joe. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, I guess this would be another example of infringement on home city rule, I guess, if you want to talk about legislation from coming down from Salem that influences what we do in town locally, here it is again. <laughs> yeah, we can't, we, we can't put these two votes. I mean, did you call the question, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see, this is a move to approve it. Uh, just a simple voice vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passed four to zero. Thank you all. Staff Commission reports, Finance Department, Cindy and Elizabeth. And I was excited for a moment. Because when I got here, thinking that this was the empty chair and my name tag was here. I'd made some headway on this, sending out these landlord notices. Turned out it was a staff error. Darn it. But maybe it's necessary. I don't want to get to Councillor Gladwell going on why I'm always whining about that. Um, anything, any other questions on that one? Uh, Chief, your report. Mayor and Council, I have before you the statistical report for the month of July. Uh, numbers are within uh, standards of what they have been in the past. Um, I would say that uh, the last uh, month we did have the, the National Night Out, which was a, was good, a good event. Uh, the number uh, of turnout was down lower from uh, previous years, uh, but we uh, believe that that was because of the heat. That was the week that we had the excessive uh, uh, temperatures of over 100 degrees uh, mm -hmm. that week, and that uh, felt that that uh, did play a big part in the numbers that we had. So. How was the eclipse besides the collision out here? <clears throat> so the eclipse was uh, went very smoothly. Uh, we had uh, a large number of officers working. Uh, it, the people we had uh, numerous compliments from the community and from the people that were from out of town, uh, talking about uh, how how smooth it went. Uh, we just had the one accident uh, as people were leaving town, um, uh, but other than that, it went it went well. 
Chief, we were just talking about fireworks uh, back to Fourth of July. How how many uh, say incidents did we chase down, mess around with on the fourth this last this last year or this year? There was. There was numerous ones. I don't know the number off the top of my head. I'd have to go and, and pull the reports to see what they do with those. But every year, there's many different reports of illegal fireworks going off. And, the and guys, you see them all over town. The guys are out them. chasing these down all evening? Okay. Yes. OK. Yeah. Um, okay. And the, the biggest issue with them is, is the risk of fire uh, and landing on other people's houses and, and hitting people with them. OK, thank you. Anything else from anyone on that? Uh, Mr. Um, Mayor. Go ahead. Just a quick question, Chief, on uh, peer court referrals. How does that, uh, how's that affect, or how does that change every year so much, the swing? Like, looks like for 2016, we did one a month, less than one a month. And this year, we're looking like just over two or just, just less than three. You guys find more interaction with the kids, or? Just about. Those numbers, uh, what they're including in there now, what they didn't before, is uh, the peer court uh, before just strictly took uh, referrals uh, from the police departments, uh, and now they're refer they're taking some referrals from parents uh, that are directly calling the peer okay. court and saying, "Can you okay. help us out?" So we've added those numbers in Thanks. there as well. Sorry. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right. We're moving on. Uh, Lance, Mr. Ludwig. Uh, the uh, Public Works Report. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Before you, you have the Public Works Monthly Operating Report for July. They're pretty much, all the numbers are pretty much in line with flows and uh, for the month, the summer months. Uh, we've had, we produced, or we had 34.6 million gallons of uh, sewage treated. Uh, we produced, on a, on a big day, uh, 6.2 million gallons of water from our treatment plant. The uh, public works uh, operators replaced 12 meters. They cleaned number two filter bed down to treatment plant. Uh, our street crews swept 183 curb miles and collected 30 cubic yards of debris from that. Uh, the parks, we had uh, one, I didn't realize this, but we had one volunteer that uh, put in 114 hours. I didn't, did not realize that at all. It may have been the Boy Scout that actually put in um, the tree identifier signs, but uh, Lisa didn't put that down, so that's what I'm just guessing. He may have, he had a big crew out there doing that. So if you go out to Pioneer Park, he, uh, he put in like 20 uh, tree species identifier uh, signs in front of different species out at uh, Pioneer Park. Came out real nice. Uh, we'll have a write-up about him soon in our uh, utility billing or our Alyssa's News, newspaper, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, we uh, we had forty three thousand dollars of SDCs last month, single family dwellings, All right. and that concludes July report. If you Thank have any you. questions? I'll be happy yeah. to answer. Are there any questions for Lance? Go ahead. I do have a quick question. So, what type of SDC are we looking at for the the dwelling, the additional dwelling? That's a good question, Brian. <laughs> I don't think we've looked at that yet quite, but I think uh, it would be very similar depending on how many people live in it. I think it's a, a matter of people living in it. And uh, I mean, you're gonna have one hookup, right? Or are they well, gonna be using off the hookup at the house? I think that depends on whether yeah. they um, have a, an additional water meter and an additional service lateral, and that will depend on whether it's a detached structure or attached and what the public work standards I imagine uh, would the, require. I imagine the SDC for stormwater would go up because they're creating impervious area. Mm -hmm. Transportation, they're adding mm -hmm. to our uh, transportation system. And a parks SDC for a, sure. A parks SDC, uh, again, like Dan said, depends if they hook up to an, the existing sewer from the house that's on the lot or if they had to put in a new service mm -hmm. or if they need a new water uh, meter. You know, all those, it really depends on what they come in with. But at the minimum, transportation, parks, storm water. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Fleischman. Uh, planning and development. You've got my written report in front of you. Uh, the real item of note is um, 
the Marion County's uh, Community Services yeah, Division or sure. Department or whatever uh, has had put out a uh, request for proposal yeah. from consultants to look at the future of the rail line that runs from Woodburn through Mount Angel Silverton and terminates here in Staten. So I participated in uh, a group uh, there assisting them. They have, um, well, looking at July, uh, we had one meeting to review the RFP. Since that time, actually, the, the proposals have come in and we so there were two proposals. We've selected a contractor. I haven't heard that yet that a contract's been signed and the work's underway, but. Hey, Dan, do you have a copy of that RFP in your office? I, I do. Okay. I, I have it on the computer, but I can, if okay. you're interested, I'll print it out. Okay, can thank you. Can you forward it to us? I couldn't understand you. Can you forward it to us? Yes. If you all like to see it, I'll send it to the council. If you don't like to see it, delete my email. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Questions? Thoughts? Okay. So, oops. all right. Uh, Janet, uh, library report, please. Mr. Mayor and Council, you have my report in front of you. Um, July is uh, the, the mostly a summer reading month. So it's a busy month for us. I'd also like to invite you, our um, author visit that will be in September, will be the 21st of September. She's an Oregon Book Award winner. She wrote a Civil War historical fiction. It's very interesting. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, anything else, Jenna? Uh, thank you. Uh, any presentations or comments from the public? Anything else this evening? Yes, ma'am. So do we have anything on the pool? We normally have done the pool in the past. Every quarter we plan on doing that. If we want to do it every month, we could also do that. It's, it's really, I mean, we're defining how we do this, so we can do it either way. Okay. I got notice that the, the volcanoes wanted to um, uh, recognize Billy as a hometown hero. Did anybody else get? I hadn't heard that. But I liked uh, it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I did throw her name out there when they were looking for him. I thought that, but I didn't think they would make me be involved in it. So I was <laughs> trying to get somebody else to maybe be involved in it. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. yeah. We support you. <laughs> Who better to push every issue out there? Come on. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'm glad you. If you put well, I just may not do anything with it. I may call them and tell them that no, you, I'm not good there because I just don't have any time to put something else on my plate. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Keith, anything from the city administrator? Yeah, I'd like to, um, we, uh, we did a community watch party for the eclipse and we put, put an offer out to staff and, and Bob Parsons, who normally does our park maintenance, spoke up and said he would like to do it and I'd like to recognize Bob for putting on a really nice uh, event and community watch party. He did a, did a fantastic job. And Brenda, at least one of her daughters, uh, helped. And then Pam Pugsley was down helping as well. So just a really nice event and wanted to recognize him. And I think Chief has something you wanted to add as well. I wanted to, to add to that about uh, some of the, the volunteers that we had working for the Eclipse as well. We had several uh, different of the police volunteers. Uh, we had uh, Dave Bevins uh, and Alan Pinto. Uh, uh, all who, both of them put in many, many hours, and actually uh, Claudia Camacho, uh, who's one of our cadets, uh, uh, spent uh, hours and hours working the whole weekend. Uh, and then we had uh, uh, Sharon Goodman uh, working in our uh, records department so that we could keep our records office uh, open 24 hours a day through the, through the event. And it just went really smoothly. We wouldn't have been able to do it without those volunteers. All right, that's good, thank you. Uh, and how with the moon went really smooth too, huh, Rich? Yep, it did. Keith, anything else from nothing from you this evening? That's all, Mayor. Okay, I don't have anything else this evening. Business from I the council. Seen, I haven't looked at my email, folks. One, one, one at a time. Time. <laughs> Any business from the council this evening? Future agenda items then. Uh, community grants on September 18th. We're not going to have a meeting the fifth. Uh, start a school and uh, local disruption there.
community grants uh, West High Street abandonment and vacation of an alley continuation. And with that, if there's nothing else this evening, we're done.